Good morning and thank you for staying with us on KTN Sunrise Live. We want to get into our discussion right now. And uh, like we said, we are talking about the Marriage Bill 2013. And hence our question to you today. What are your thoughts on the Marriage Bill 2013? What are your thoughts on the Marriage Bill 2013? Please do send us in your thoughts on Twitter at Yvonne Okwara, at KTN Kenya and also make sure you send us an SMS 8040. Any questions that you've got will all be answered today so that um, your discussions are a little bit more informed and uh, that you know a little bit better about this. Remember, August 5th is when you will be able to present your thoughts on this to Parliament. You'll have 20 days to do so. But before you do that, please do make sure you are well acquainted with this bill. And uh, like we said today, our discussion is not to make you like it or not, is to make you know about it and then you can make up your mind after our discussion today, right? And we have Njoki Karoya, whom you know, who's been with us, and she's our columnist at The Standard. Not only that, but she's a women's rights activist talking to young women around the country and indeed uh, others in the workplace in various uh, forums uh, around the country. Thank you for joining us. And we also have Rose Mbanya, who's a family lawyer. Thank you so much for making the time to be with us. Thank you for right. having me. So let's start off with, uh, with you, Rose, <coughs> and uh, to just talk about this. Uh, a very general overview of the marriage bill 2013 what does it aim to do mm -hmm. um, you know just very generally okay very generally the marriage bill 2013 first and foremost seeks to collate all the various legislations that deal with marriages and to bring them into one statute which would then make it possible for anybody wanting to know regarding their rights, regarding their obligations, regarding what it is that their marriage entails, mm -hmm. they would be able to get it under one act. The second thing that it entail, uh, you know, that it seeks to do is to um, put together or regulate the various forms of marriages that can be made or that can be, um, yes, that can be recognized in Kenya mm -hmm. and then set out the various um, aspects to be looked at in each of that marriage to see you know where for what falls where okay. and make marriages all marriages in Kenya once recognizable registrable okay. under that act. All right, mm -hmm. um, consolidating the seven laws, mm -hmm. um, you know, from the Hindu to the Muslim to yes. the Mohammedan law to the Christian law, African customary marriage. Why consolidate them? What is uh, the disadvantage of having all these laws separately? Uh -huh. One of the disadvantages of having everything separately is just the impossibility mm -hmm. of being able to have a place where you can go so that you can then check and know you know fully or get a full picture of what your rights duties and obligations are okay. because what happens is that in the current situation we have the rights and responsibilities in one act mm -hmm. we have a recourse say uh, on issues of divorce in another act mm -hmm. and I think when you have a situation where you have a one-stop shop it's certainly much more convenient okay all right Njoki um, everybody saying this is biased towards women uh, what do you think well is it biased <laughs> against women um, uh, probably against men I think <laughs> what most people would be <laughs> thinking I've, I've looked at the at the bill and and there are two ways to look at it. Mm -hmm. One, it, it does allow women now to enjoy um, certain privileges of being a married woman um, and, and, and knowing that should the marriage dissolve uh, for whatever reason, then perhaps you will get, um, you will be compensated for the work that you've put into the mm -hmm. marriage, mm -hmm. um, put, you know, building the marriage and building the home. Mm -hmm. um, however, when you look at the fact that, uh, that uh, the, I think the contentious issue really is the, is the property, mm -hmm. is the distribution of property. Mm -hmm. And I think that is where we're finding men who are, who are becoming, who are not very happy with that because okay. uh, for, for numerous reasons, sometimes they believe that the property they make, they make as individuals, but right. not, not as a family unit. And primarily because men anyway. Uh, in, in many instances, we do have the cosmopolitan areas where, you know, women are also working and they're going to 
make the money, but predominantly around the country, men it's do the make the money it's and the do bring home the bread and butter, and we'll be getting to that in a bit. I and mean, it's not just just the men; it's mm -hmm. just that even uh, 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 that's in terms of uh, divorce, mm -hmm. but also in terms of death. Mm -hmm. When a man leaves, mm -hmm. their relatives now come in and claim the that's property. Right. So I think uh, when you look at in terms of it protecting the widow, protecting the children, mm -hmm. protecting the the divorced wife, protecting the the woman who was part of his you know his um invest right free time <laughs> yes um then i think the compensation is is the, the the aspect of the compensation is excellent however we we need to i think interrogate the extent to which this compensation is made okay. and i think that is where the whole drama is mm -hmm. coming from mm -hmm. because some people are saying mm -hmm. that i think we may need to um uh, describe mm. or, or, or is it describe mm. what matrimonial property is That's right. so that it is very specific and it does not include everything that was acquired okay. during the lifespan of the marriage absolutely um, okay all right mm. and we have so many questions that are coming in already and we will get to that in just a moment i can see your questions on our sms line uh, about it and marital law but let's get into some of those issues and mm. break them down a little bit and i think the first one is even before uh, the marriage happens and it starts off with the promise that a man makes to a woman that mm. you know i will marry you or perhaps let's let's do it the other way around mm. that a woman says yes I agree I to be married you. to yes. you mm. um, and then somewhere along the way you decide well I you know like this I, uh, yes mm. or you and discover something no. or you discover something <laughs> there you go <laughs> mm -hmm. I mean which for me I think is the whole point of courtship isn't it to see you know the qualities of this even when you do promise to marry I mean surely yes, if you so find something wrong, yes. the freedom to be but then to now tell us what the marriage bill says apparently if you break that promise mm -hmm. even before you get into it that the aggrieved party can go to court? This is what the marriage bill proposes. Mm -hmm. It says this, that a promise to marry is not binding. Yes. However, if a party to such promise does suffer damages as a result of that promise, then they do have an avenue to be able to claim those damages. But I think that it's important to, to understand what is envisaged in this proposal mm -hmm. it's not um, as you know a lot of people are saying that you know we meet and at the coffee shop you say you know you look, you yeah. look good and yeah. i could marry you <laughs> and that then forms the Constitutes basis of a promise, a promise and okay. then you're going to sue me for that uh -huh. no i think that it's the deeper meaning you see kenya is also rooted under common law mm -hmm. okay mm -hmm. our jurisdiction allows that and so when we talk about um, a promise to marry it can be a situation where for instance, you know, I, I like the example that you gave because I think it's important for us to look at this thing in a gender sensitive way. Mm -hmm. Where a man says to me that, um, you know, or when I say to a man that, yes, I do agree and yes, I will marry you. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that promise that I have made to him, there is a betrothal there is the engagement right. there is the rings maybe okay. there is the changing of jobs see maybe okay. he'll move down from where he is to come to where i am okay. or vice versa he'll mm -hmm. he'll have me move investment will be made in that process based on the promise that in we have made to. in the run-up okay. to right and so if damages have been suffered as a result mm -hmm. of that then there should be an avenue to be able to say i should be able to recover because whether it was based on a lie or whether it was based on, yes, there was the possibility at this time, but there is now no possibility. Can I be able to recover the investment that has gone okay. into all that? Right. But is there mm -hmm. an opportunity in mm -hmm. that same, um, mm -hmm. for people to go to court and to argue their case? Yes. Yes. Because, you see, if um, I made a promise to you mm -hmm. and I actually changed my life mm -hmm. to suit yours right. yes. and I even moved towns mm -hmm. and even invested in you know perhaps bought my 100,000 wedding dress mm -hmm. and, and all mm -hmm. that mm -hmm. but what I discovered about you um, yeah. is what makes me change my mind yes. and I can actually change my mind at the 11th hour right. at the altar, at the altar. Yes. Yes. so can, can we go to court and fight it out because just because I made a promise mm -hmm. and, and you put in investment based on the promise if you shattered mm -hmm. something some aspect in the mm -hmm. promise then perhaps compensation should not be made that you see the thing and, and uh, you see the point that you're making is if I shatter something 
to the, uh, you know that that was that was um, one of the bases for okay. the promise. Right. Can you sue? I don't think that you can. I think that what we're talking about is this: we change positions because of a promise that I've made to you. Mm -hmm. Okay. The case in court will not be you must marry me because you promised right. to marry me. Yes. The case in court will be this: as a result of the thing that you said to me, these are the uh, mm -hmm. damages or these are the investments that, that I've made, made as a yes. result. Based on and the promise. Yes, and of course an interrogation would be made mm -hmm. into that. You see, if because I love you very much and along the way I decide to buy you a dress mm -hmm. and then buy you a ring mm -hmm. and then, you know, there's a whole aspect of it's a gift. Are you going to sue me that's right. because it was a gift? That's and right. I don't think that's what is contemplated. What is contemplated is you lead somebody down that garden path investments are made mm -hmm. if that person whether the man or the woman is able to clearly show that based on the promise that was made i have made certain changes in my life i have spent certain funds okay. i have done certain investments mm -hmm. that have now come a cropper because okay. of you've gone allow me allow yes. me to also ask then um let's take the situation because this will most likely be mm -hmm. the case that it mm -hmm. is a man who's proposed to a woman she's made changes she's mm -hmm. changed jobs she's moved from Eldred to Nairobi mm -hmm. perhaps she's taken a lesser paying job because True. well she wasn't able to get it but doesn't the man also make an investment exactly. who gets to pay him for that investment because rightfully so the mm -hmm. woman has made changes in her life yes but so has the man he's probably decided that because I'm going to marry woman X mm -hmm. I will move into a bigger house I will pay more rent I will buy better furniture because you know I can see but he himself decides well you know woman X isn't really the one for me but who compensates him for all those changes that he's made in his life even though it is his decision to not go through with it look if it's your decision mm -hmm. not to go ahead with something mm -hmm. Then you weigh the pros and cons. Okay. You weigh the positions that you have taken, mm -hmm. the investments that you've made. Mm -hmm. If it is you that's making that decision, mm -hmm. then I don't expect that there's somebody that will be coming right. to pay you or to compensate so you, you because you're making the decision. Okay. You are making. But, but how do you actually. respond mm -hmm. to to the claims where people are saying that mm -hmm. this is then a denial of mm -hmm. people's free will? I mean, I should be able to make the promise, and if I've not sign on the dotted line i should be able to back out mm -hmm. and you see even even in that situation and perhaps what the woman maybe the woman or the man found his fiance fiance mm. cheating on him and then he decides this would or yeah. the woman maybe moved into their home and now they began to make the changes but now because he moved she moved into his home he's yeah. now seen her true colors yes. and he's he saying like i don't like this at all <laughs> i don't yes. like this i think uh, <laughs> the truth the i'm matter. sorry yeah. just just go back absolutely of course a marriage in fact one of the things that it says it has to be a voluntary union, union yes. yeah. between a man and, and a, a woman, woman. yes right. yeah. okay whether i like that or in polygamy, polygamy. yes mm -hmm. okay so that the whole issue of the conscience and the free will mm -hmm. are things that are contemplated and that's why it says the promise is not binding okay. what however can what are, the avenue that is provided mm -hmm. is in that whole business of promising each other things and then realizing we don't want this if there are some damages that have been suffered okay. there is an opportunity right. to look at that and see okay. are this redeemable okay yeah. so for, for you and Jockey, does it mean then that people need to be very careful about the promises that they make because you know it could potentially cost you it is an investment I think whether or not you're able to go to court and say yeah. look I you know I, I bought my own wedding dress or this is what I did but regardless of that does it then make us very careful to date as much as as long as possible and make sure well you know though they say you can never really know somebody 100% these are matters of the heart which I'm not sure you can quite legislate yeah. but does it then call for that rather than what people are saying uh, they're saying oh now all men are going to be very scared I, I highly doubt that that's a situation in the country that men are just going around making promises to marry girls or oh. is that what happens am i being naive <laughs> <laughs> do i not know this i mean do men randomly say to women you know i think i could marry you is that really the case of course they do i mean you'll find them saying it all over no no i mean and, and some of and, and see this is this is the reason why this particular clause is is contentious because men don't want to be held for things they say to get something okay and and they do make all the sorts all, all sorts of promises right. and, and and in a way i'm a bit um 
I, I'm not very supportive of that particular clause. I'm sorry, but, but dear friend, friend, can, can I just ask, Rosie? Um, uh -huh. Carry on. Sorry. Because my thinking is, when someone makes a promise, mm -hmm. do you want to make investments before you sign on the dotted line? Shouldn't you take responsibility for your own actions? You but see, here's the thing, mm -hmm. Rose, and, and this is what it says, that you do have to prove that there was a promise made. So it won't be a random statement at a coffee shop that I think exactly. I will marry you. The lady has got to go to court and say, he not only said that he would, he came, he met my parents, That's there different. was a Thank meeting you. here, yeah. there fact, is an engagement yeah. ring. Yeah. You know, and, so in it's, fact, and, in fa and that's why, you know, no law is ever perfect, mm. all yeah. right? Mm. But what this provision is doing is simply giving an avenue mm -hmm. it is saying this first of all a promise to marry is not binding right. meaning he cannot it's, be forced to marry he cannot be forced to right. marry okay. you however if that had happened and then there were some damages mm -hmm. that are properly provable mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. then you have an avenue to mm -hmm. be able to do that yeah. again i don't think the contemplation of yeah. the art is to make everybody very nervous yes you know, men and women very nervous in their relationship. But it should stop you from it. making those frivolous yes, promises. But you know, the frivolous <laughs> promises are very different. If, for example, we said we're going to get married and we have a wedding planner, we've both paid the wedding planner. There's a check. My name, his name. You know, it's some of those proof of promise. So I doubt yes. that a mm -hmm. statement would be a proof of promise because it would be his word against mine. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but you know, I would simply say, I mean, the man would say, when did I make that promise? Oh, you don't remember that day we were sitting at the coffee shop at two in the afternoon and you said you would marry me? Where's <laughs> the proof? Oh. So yeah, there's, there is the burden of proof yeah. on the person that's taking the other Certainly. to court. Yeah. So I doubt that all these statements are men are saying, oh, now everything we say will be, yeah. where is the proof? Because it, we it, say yeah. things all I, the time. I don't think that the, is, is in the proof, is in, is, is more in the damages where mm. then even the other person is bound to also so it's yes, about everybody exactly. coming up with claims That's and right. saying yes. okay so you're claiming you spent two hundred thousand i spent four hundred thousand and people will yeah. end up itemizing okay. every little thing that they did um the, one of my cousins i mm -hmm. think had that where mm -hmm. we went up to the point where mm -hmm. the next thing remaining mm -hmm. was a church wedding mm -hmm. and then at the 11th hour the church wed i mean the guy just said oh i've changed my mind mm -hmm. I mean, doesn't she deserve some compensation? Do you think? In fact, you've been asked the family because we That's went right. and I think <laughs> yeah, you know, there's an avenue. You to to yes, at least an avenue to say, yes. let us look at this thing. Okay. Yeah. You spend this much, right. I spend this much. Can we have a situation where this gets resolved? That's then right. everybody goes okay. happily on their way. So it's, it's yeah. when it's at that very advanced stage. Yes. So I, it's I, not I, casual. Yeah. Well, mm -hmm. I doubt that men should really be worried about no. the things that they say. Unless, of course, you regularly meet a girl and after two weeks you buy her engagement and ring and you go meet her parents and you yeah. buy a wedding dress and, you so know, I'm but just I, I wondering that that um, even as we're having the conversation mm. I, I'm, I'm therefore wondering mm -hmm. is it that that statement has been misunderstood maybe because it is not um, clear. very clear mm -hmm. in its um, in what, the way it's been written yeah what I would say is this perhaps there is a need but the, 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 uh, the bill does at the end say that rules can be made mm -hmm. that right. are supportive of yes. the various provisions. Right. Okay. Right. So maybe rules will be made which then state what are the ingredients of such promise. Okay. Uh -huh. Okay, all right. which okay. can make things easier. Right. Let's move on to another one. First of all, mm -hmm. uh, the very definition of marriage in the marriage bill, voluntary yes. union between a mm -hmm. man and a woman. So I think everything else mm -hmm. uh, is out of the way. Yes. But it mm -hmm. goes on to say whether in a monogamous, monogamous relationship polygamous. or a polygamous. Mm -hmm. But then there's that rider about polygamy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Let's talk about that. The consent? <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay. Well, the, what the bill says. It's, it's that first of all, it provides for the five forms of marriage. Okay. There'll Which be the are? Christian marriage, mm -hmm. there'll be the civil marriage, there'll be marriage under customary law, there'll be the Islamic marriage, the Hindu marriage, sorry, it's six, uh, because there is also marriage under any other faith mm. okay. or group. All right. Okay. 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 So, if you want us to take the customary mm -hmm. law, mm -hmm. I think that in looking at the bill, what is important is for us to be looking at the spirit and rationale okay. in each provision that is made so that maybe we can be able to understand and interrogate it better mm -hmm. and then be able to have a discussion in it. Mm -hmm. I think that, um, first of all, what the bill provides is that, yes, a marriage under customary law mm -hmm. will be recognizable okay. and registrable okay. under the Act. As opposed to what's happening now with polygamous relationships. Yes. Let's talk about that. What happens now when a man has three wives? What happens r currently mm -hmm. is that uh, there is no, there is not, um, there is the general acceptance mm -hmm. in law mm -hmm. that 
customs will also be, you know, cust um, matters done under customary law mm -hmm. will also be something that is recognizable. However, there is no statute okay. that quite defines what that yeah. is all about. And so, yes. simply, does that mean then, you know, he gets a marriage certificate for him and the first wife? What happens to him and the second and the third? There in is the no bill? certificate. No, right the, now. Currently, yes, currently okay. right now there is, there is, uh, there is nothing. So there is only no one uh, registration. only one certificate that he gets for Actually, the first one or none? None. He doesn't get any uh -huh. because what it is, in, uh, um, when somebody is married currently mm -hmm. and, uh, you know, uh, polygam uh, is a polygamist, mm -hmm. what would then follow is that that must be under customary law. Okay. So the various wives uh -huh. that he has married would then need to show under our customs, okay. he married me because he did he this, he came, to home, he came home, he, he yes. and, mm. and so on and okay. so forth. So that's what the current right. position is. Okay. Yes. So now when we say polygamous unions are registrable, mm -hmm. what does that mean? It means that under, uh, when married under polygamy, there will then be the opportunity to even get a certificate okay. that then confirms okay. that there is a marriage here okay. because currently what happens is sometimes you'll find a lot of in fact which is a bit sad mm -hmm. there will be a woman that will come and say that i've been living with mm -hmm. this gentleman for the last nine years say we've got three mm -hmm. children mm -hmm. he has other wives mm -hmm. that i know of mm -hmm. they may or may not know me I'm not sure whether I'm married to him or not. Okay. 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 Even if he came home and he saw my mom, right. but we, I'm not sure what this union between me okay. and him is on about. Okay. So what the bill then sets out to do is to be able to, to have a recognition okay. by way of a document right. that that okay. marriage exists. And Which means the man must <coughs> be willing to then have that certificate with that woman. Because I'm uh, seeing now both there's parties. the both yeah, parties. Both parties. Yes. Because yeah. now I'm seeing mm. there's the aspect of the can we stay that mm -hmm. has mm -hmm. is not is no longer been endorsed. Yes, in the in this. Yes, in fact, yes. I think what it what I think what it seeks to do is mm -hmm. this. You see, we are starting from the premise that a marriage is a voluntary union okay. between a man and a woman, mm -hmm. voluntary. Okay. And then we are also um, looking at the you know trying to 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 pull out the the, the, the spirit of the constitution as well. Mm -hmm. Right. Parties who are married will be equal within that marriage. Mm -hmm. Okay. Mm. So then, when we talk about the customary marriage, if I'm the man and I've mm -hmm. married first wife, mm -hmm. all right, mm -hmm. and after three months we then go to the director and get the document that shows that we are married. Right. Mm -hmm. First of all, in entering a polygamous marriage, mm -hmm. both of you consent that you know that you're entering into a potentially polygamous mm -hmm. marriage. Mm -hmm. So yes, there will be that so that somebody else may also be brought be along, along the way. Do you think this is a practical part of it? <laughs> I know Rose is giving us what the law says, yeah. but do you think, you know, there's I don't know. You know, when you talk about ladies who, um, like you say, I, I am aware of the other wives, they may not be aware of me, but do you think there's any woman that will say, you know, he says, oh, you know, I really like you and I really love you and this is what we want to do. But, you know, I'm, I'm kind of yeah. a polygamous man and, and, you know, would you mind that women will say, okay. You see, I like what she's saying about the fact that the marriage now is being, you know, the, the description mm -hmm. about it being uh, voluntary between the man mm -hmm. and the woman, mm -hmm. which means if the man then identifies another woman mm -hmm. and he wants to make, he, make her he, um, his wife, mm -hmm. then he has that option to go and sort of declare it mm -hmm. and then there's that certificate that he gets. Mm -hmm. So this woman can then legally say, mm -hmm. I am also his wife. Mm -hmm. the, this, the, the doubt is, is, is the doubtful one. Mm -hmm. And that doubtful one then shows, in my opinion, that the man perhaps did not want to go the whole hog mm -hmm. and then make mm -hmm. him make her like his legal mm -hmm. wife mm -hmm. but he's happy to I when he's you know mm. unhappy with the two and three and four mm -hmm. go here and then he gives he, he serves children so i think I, for me i think it opens this conversation on and, and also gives the women the power to then put the man on you know on the on spot, the spot. Okay. and say can you describe what this is and it's yes, and so even as we talk about the description, when we say that the man has got to state to the woman that this will be a potentially, potentially polygamous union, is that in writing? Because yes. it could easily... Mm -hmm. This is the thing. Yeah. In fact, I don't even think that it is the man needs to tell the woman mm -hmm. that this is going to be potentially polygamous. Mm. The parties entering into that union mm -hmm. need to know or need to acknowledge to mm -hmm. each other mm -hmm. that 
we consent that this will oh, be a in fact it is this way uh -huh. as we enter the customary marriage uh -huh. in customs that allow, allow for or okay. are potentially polygamous right. then i'm aware mm. as a man and i'm aware as the woman mm -hmm. in getting into this marriage institution mm -hmm. that it is potentially polygamous okay. Okay? okay what the bill then proposes is that once that happens a registration of that marriage will be done right so i'll have the certificate or we'll have the certificate mm -hmm. that says x and y are married in uh, you know whatever customary yeah. laws whichever okay. society which, they're coming from yes. which is potentially polygamous uh -huh. okay. come in wife number two uh -huh. yes there will be then the marriage of the gentleman with the, uh, the, with second. the, the second lady okay. under the customs and the rituals that need to be right, done. Right. And then there will be a registration of that. that there is a marriage between okay. this lady and this gentleman. Right. It's under this um, society, okay. customary, that again okay. acknowledges that okay. it is. So, so, so we're saying the declaration has to, meet, has to be made from the onset. The knowledge and yes. the consent that you're getting into, into a customary yes. marriage yes. Mm -hmm. which is so potentially polygamous mm -hmm. has to be made at the so onset. Are we saying yes. that the customary marriages mm -hmm. are the only ones that are capable to be potentially polygamous? Well, no, there are I two marriages uh -huh. that are capable uh -huh. of being potentially polygamous. The Islamic marriage, okay. because yes. that is the provision is, uh -huh. in their, you know, in their, mm -hmm. in their, in their law, and, and the customary, and the customary yeah. marriage. Yeah. Because okay. the Christians yeah. have different have beliefs. A different, uh -huh. The Hindus and the Christians yeah. okay. and the civil marriage mm -hmm. are of a uh, are different belief, which is that that would be okay. a monogamous All right. marriage. Okay. So when yeah. you know, when you go into it and you're saying this is a customary marriage, yes, it is registrable, yes, but this is a customary, so you do need to know that under customary marriages it is potentially, are, potentially it polygamous, is potentially it is potentially okay. polygamous. which is very good that you're making that very clear yeah. because we've always understood that mm -hmm. customary marriages are potentially polygamous yes. based on the customs of our community right. yes. and and that the islamic you know based on the quran yes. however the excitement out there yes. is that once you've said potentially polygamous mm -hmm. the understanding of the public is that we're saying even within the Christian union, no, the, no, poten no, no. the potentially mm. monogamous unions, men are celebrating and saying, mm. Yeah, now, now it means now I can free. go. Yes. Actually, so it, it, <laughs> I'd, I'd like that made yeah. quite clear. Very clear. It is yes. very important to understand this. Again, as we said, there are those, um, the various marriages that have been recognized That's in this right. field. Mm -hmm. If you get into a marriage under the Christian, mm form mm -hmm. then it is a monogamous okay. marriage mm -hmm. okay in line with the law in line with the law christian that govern marriages. christian marriages okay. okay if you enter into a civil marriage mm -hmm. same story mm -hmm. if you enter into a hindu marriage mm -hmm. same story mm -hmm. if you enter into a customary marriage where both of you Agree, agree to a customary yes. marriage. In fact, we're right. both, I mean, if you're both aware that you're getting into a customary marriage, yes. then that's a potential yeah. Yeah. Okay. I almost and feel so like you have to repeat that Islamic. again for one. <laughs> no, I know. <laughs> because with the Islamic uh, okay. marriage. So, yes. knowing if you're marrying a Muslim man, please do know yes, that he will potentially have possibly three others. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Also, he may yes. or may not. He may or may not, but he, he has might. that option. Yes. Same yeah. with customary. So, now, if mm -hmm. I get married to a man in a church mm -hmm. and it is a Christian wedding, mm -hmm. can he then come and marry another woman? No, he cannot because okay. he does not have capacity to marry another under woman that. under the Christian. But then there's another woman in the picture. Mm -hmm. How how mm -hmm. how does that woman mm -hmm. um, exactly? How mm -hmm. how especially what for do you her? Mean there's another woman in the picture. Let's under say the ten the years, picture. twenty let's years down the line, and mm -hmm. you got married in church under Christian law, mm -hmm. and uh, you know he starts to, as happens quite often, he starts often, to yeah. see another woman, mm -hmm. and maybe they have a child together, yes. and so well, what is supporting her. Yes. What is her definition? Exactly. Now? Her definition would have to be the loose definition of the mpango akando. There's no other way of defining right. that woman because yeah. we are being very clear what a marriage is okay and so does she have any right her that child woman, probably does her children certainly have okay. rights because okay. children right. under the children's act yes. and that's a whole different inquiry okay. mm -hmm. have rights to be mm -hmm. cared for by their parents, Both parents. regardless of whether they're married mm -hmm. or, or not, not married yes. 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 Okay. i mean speaking to look now mm. i know potentially yes, it's quite nice yes, yes. it's very yes. clear now. In fact, so. and then it's, it's important to just also add mm -hmm. with regard to the polygamous mm -hmm. marriage mm -hmm. that even when parties get into the polygamous marriage mm -hmm. into the customary marriage which they then know is potentially polygamous if they then agree along the way that we want to change this mm -hmm. to be a monogamous marriage. Mm -hmm. They can do that, okay. Okay? okay? But 
they cannot do that when already another, another woman, woman has right. been brought right. into the picture. Yeah, because it's already yes. polygamous. It's already polygamous. I mean, so you, you can now you can disenfranchise now. That's somebody right. who's okay, already... Okay. Mm -hmm. Just, just a second, uh -huh. uh, Yvonne, if you don't mind. So, um, assuming the bill is passed today, yes. and we have quite a number of men mm -hmm. who um, married other women, yes. and they had that customary marriage with other women, mm -hmm. and then customary. ultimately... Mm -hmm. Yes, exactly, customary. Mm -hmm. And there was a declaration within the communities yeah. where the woman was embraced. Yeah. But then some of them ultimately um, they either get saved or whatever and then they identify one woman mm -hmm. who they then take to church mm -hmm. and then and the other either, women yeah. are sort of neglected. Mm -hmm. Now in terms of this bill, yes. um, how does it accommodate the other women who mm -hmm. also were declared mm -hmm. wives Wise. before they were abandoned mm -hmm. ish because at of the a last change of because faith, faith, which exactly, is allowed. Which yes. is allowed yes. Yes. I think what is important for us to understand is that the law does not act retrospectively. Okay. Okay. Okay? So if there were certain rights that were acquired by such... In fact, it is this way. If... Because what I heard you say is, if they were married customarily, mm -hmm. customarily then is potentially polygamous, mm -hmm. whether in the bill right now or, or even not. as we... Yes, yes, yes. Okay? yes right here. Yeah. So okay. that there are certain rights and customs of each uh, society mm -hmm. that then follow on what you're to do mm -hmm. with them um, because it, it is natural and it is normal to have conflict within the family yeah. right. and it's also natural that even um, after you've married the four wives that one of them may not get along with you and yeah. therefore you may need to okay. uh, have and her go okay. or ha you know, have, have her leave the harem as okay. it were <laughs> <laughs> I'm I like sure that. that the customs and the you know yeah. the, 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 of the society mm -hmm. then in form of what to do okay, with regards right. to the rights. Regarding the rights of the children, that will be taken care okay, of. Okay. Regarding the rights of the okay. woman, I guess we'd look at that custom. Indeed. Mm. And if they're not repugnant. Yes. With, yeah. Um, yeah, but here's a, a, an SMS that says, um, uh, can I get it now? Mm -hmm. um, just talking about the fact that the bill is ignorant of cultural diversities across, you know, the various communities. Mm -hmm. When we talk about customary, um, you know, our customary rites and rituals aren't different. written. Yes, yes. And there's no law mm -hmm. that the Louis, oh, well, well, there is, it's mm -hmm. known, no? mm -hmm. but you know, it's not written. Mm -hmm. These are the Luya laws. Yes. These are the Taita laws. Yes. These are the Kikuyu laws. Yes. Um, so how has it made an accommodation for that because mm -hmm. these are just things and as happens with tradition you will only know about it when you get to that when you situation. get into that situation if someone has died that's when you know ah this is how we deal with death in, in shock, yeah, in shock, in shock yes, you know mm. I need to shave off my hair and yeah. things like that mm. but then how does it you know how can you then go to um, you know the registrar and say now according to Luya customs who is the person that is the authority mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. on cultural customs that mm -hmm. will then govern that customary marriage mm -hmm. and this is why it's important that we actually get to read the bill mm -hmm. because I, I like that question mm -hmm. with regard to the provisions on a customary marriage mm -hmm. what it says is that in accordance with the rights and rituals of that particular society mm -hmm. so that the act that the bill is not taking the rights and rituals of community A mm -hmm. and imposing them on community B, B. Mm -hmm. they're saying this in fact, if in your society the customs do not recognize polygamy, mm -hmm. then you don't um, expect okay. Okay. that yours will be a potentially polygamous marriage, even if you enter into marriage Customary. under that custom. Okay. Okay. Yeah, so it but does accommodate. Then, yes, I know, but who, who is the person that says that? Who is the person? Because uh -huh. you know, mm -hmm. I will come up and say, in my community, yes. this is what we do. Yes. Another elder will come up and say, no, 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 that's not right. I am the person who is yes, the authority, sure. yeah. and in this community, this is what we do and not what you're saying. In essence, um, Christian law, there's the Bible. Yes. Mohammedan law, there's the Quran. Yes. Hindu law, there's, uh, you know, there are holy books, yes. the Bhagavad Gita, I hope I'm not wrong with that one. Yeah. But you know, with who is customary the, who's law, the, who's the, who's the, the custodian, custodian of who customary says law? That this yes. is the Turkana way of living, this is how we deal with marriages, uh, divorce children and things like that this is what i would say mm. certainly in you know in in the times that we're living mm -hmm. a lot has been lost mm -hmm. with yes. regard to our customs right a lot of people are now in the cosmopolitan mm. setting mm. yes and some of us don't so remember we have no idea yeah. so that the custodian of our customs for instance i guess it would be to look back at the elders now existing mm -hmm. right. to yeah, know mm -hmm. and then to get expert witnesses from those communities okay. who would then know this is what right. as a community we right. do because i don't think there's any other way mm. of doing it mm -hmm. it would be good in fact and it's quite a good inquiry then to make that can we then get 
at least now that we have some yeah. people who are still with us mm -hmm. who know about these rights who yes, know, because sure. there's some very good customs mm -hmm. but there are others also that need to be that's Looked right, at. Yes. because they're yeah. harmful. Because yes. they're yes. harmful. They're harmful. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that but I think it also then might encourage us to take our customary laws and rituals a little more seriously and preserve that for future generations. You know, to have yeah. these traditions that are put somewhere down in writing yeah. or yes. in record for posterity. Yeah. And true. in fact, what I would add <clears> to that is this. If now that the bill proposes that mm -hmm. if you're getting into a customary marriage mm -hmm. then know that it is potentially polygamous uh -huh. get enlightened about what it is that that yes. community yeah. that yes. you're getting into that customary marriage that's right. yeah. of course there's also the other issue of it could be one community marrying another community yes. what do we do with the clash of, of custom yes. that customs, will yeah. happen there but i'm sure that there are ways of resolving it if you get the expert witnesses mm -hmm. who are aware yeah. about okay. i think in terms work. of um, identifying the cultures i think the anthropologists need to do an audit mm -hmm. yes. of, of all the all the communities that we have yeah. in this country and the cultures um, that are associated with yes. each of the communities mm -hmm. and then then do an audit where I would say these traditions are harmful yeah. and perhaps these we need to revise right. them yeah. and then these ones we, we need can to keep, keep them because yeah. they, okay. they help you and identity. this is what this community says about birth, exactly. marriage, death, yeah. yes. property and things like that and uh, yeah. you know and you might find because one. you know this uh, assimilation the, mm. the mixed Into marriages marriage. mm -hmm. is yeah. not a new phenomenon no. so no. I am sure mm. they also have the same you know they must have those, some, those issues must have a reason mm -hmm. exactly have ways Resolve, of resolving, resolving it. those yeah. issues but let's get to that I'm just really sorry Yvonne because we are talking about polygamy I'm just wondering why did the bill specifically target polyandry why can't I be allowed to have a second husband that's a good question I've asked it too but I think that um, the bill is not introducing new mm. things yes okay the bill is looking at the realities of society mm -hmm. and it is true that yes there are some societies that practiced polyandry, polyandry. And um, certain, yes, certainly the bill doesn't uh, uh, yeah, but deal some with would that. say then that's and not necessarily mm -hmm. African. You know how we, we like to go and say, let's make this law in line and tandem with our customs. Yes, there are some communities. There are some communities. Yeah, but think, why put so, it in uh -huh. the bill? Mm -hmm. Why not? not have it in the bill and mm. then let people give lawyers <laughs> money to go, <laughs> argue, like to go and argue about, about it because that. Okay. Uh, if we have those communities that practice it yeah are we also saying do we know any communities mm -hmm. though that practice allow the women to be polyandrous i don't know of any in kenya but what i do know and yeah. i think i was reading in the paper yeah. today mm. where one of the wives then marries another wife. I don't know whether that's well, what no, that is well, but yeah. you know well, I, I do understand you know how you, well, that would happen in some communities, particularly yeah. in the North Rift, you know, when a woman yeah. is unable to have children yeah. and she'd have another woman come in and help bear children. She doesn't really marry the woman. In she does the, marry the woman, she, she actually, in some communities. Yeah. 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 But, you know, I think it's, you know, come bear me children. Yeah. Because come bear me children yeah. and get recognized. And as get recognized as a part, part of, of the, the family. family. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. But you know but now you when know you, you put the name polyandrian mm -hmm. and then you almost criminalize it, mm -hmm. because let's look at some of the pastoralist communities that allow other men to come and engage Marry, with yes, a woman yes. by putting a sphere. Yeah. Now, outside. assuming mm -hmm. that um, I'm married, yes, uh, and I'm not saying this is what happens, <laughs> I have oh insights into yes. the community. <laughs> so, assuming that I am married, yes, to mm -hmm. X, yes. but I like Y. Who yeah. comes so and puts a spear outside you. And so would be so planning so. that, you know, every time, you know, today I don't <laughs> want to come and plan. You see, the husband will not enter. It's just that we have not <laughs> defined what okay. that is. Okay. okay. But that is actually, all, you're okay. actually raising yeah. a very right. important yeah. issue yeah. because there is also the possibilities that somebody may go to court with a discriminatory suit. Mm -hmm. You see, there's say, Article yes. 27 of the Constitution that, that says there should be no discrimination. Yes. Yeah. So the bill seems to allow that a man may have several, several wives. But Whereas a woman, a woman who might be capable and all that My does not have the opportunity to yes. have and it's several okay. husbands. But again, as I said, I think the bill is not necessarily introducing mm -hmm. new things, but is looking at society and then looking at ways How to of dealing with what we have. We have again, also okay. to realize law is dynamic, society is dynamic. Yes. As we go along, we if that becomes change, a yeah. real need, okay. then I guess there will be opportunity. Okay. All right, I want us to move very quickly because yes. there's several Absolutely. provisions that we've got to go through. Yes. Dowry is another one mm -hmm. saying that uh, it should be a token. It should be a token. Mm -hmm. And that it is not 
necessary if mm -hmm. in some unions you know we feel that you know, dowry is not something we mm -hmm. want to do but that it should be a token perhaps to address the issues of dowry becoming a means of commercialization well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> i think that it's a good proposal mm -hmm. to view dowry as simply a token mm -hmm. of thanksgiving or mm -hmm. acknowledgement yes. because we are very sh we are we are, we are quite we quite know right. that there's been instances where this has been used yeah commercially mm -hmm. where once a child is born and a child is a girl yes. immediately you she start starts to be looked at as merchandise right. and it's important that right. that doesn't okay. go on w yeah. is there any sort of recourse when because you know it just says it's a token now yes. for me token seems very general mm -hmm. what's a token to you what's a token to me yeah. uh, depending on my financial situation for some people a token of 50,000 for some people are thinking 50,000 yeah, is that a token are you mm -hmm. out of your mind exactly. you know, I can yeah. only maybe bring a goat and a cow and a chicken and yeah. for people a token is 5 million is yeah. Yeah, I think the so, whole rationale but, yeah. is don't make it punitive, right. don't make it commercial. Now, again, as you rightly say, mm -hmm. depending on uh, your stations in life yes. and your uh, situation, right. token will then be defined by yourself. Mm -hmm. But the principle, I think it's the principle behind it, mm -hmm. not to make it a merchandise situation. Okay. What happens if it is merchandising? You know, we talk about the promise, mm -hmm. and if you don't fulfill the promise, then, uh, you know, and I've gotten into some sort of, what mm -hmm. happens if the token, I think it's more than a token way. in yeah. my view. Do I just walk away and that's the end of that story or no, can I sue now? I, th I think <laughs> the sensitization <laughs> behind that proposal yeah. is, take it as a token mm -hmm. all right now you see if we're having negotiations and i'm telling you look give me a token of a million yeah. and you think what yeah that's not a token to me yeah. then of course at that it's point it's a token to me it's so a token to me yes. so i guess at that point it will be the whole issue of how are you able to negotiate and if those you can't discussions negotiate, if you can't negotiate walk away then i guess walk away okay yeah i guess all walk right. away okay. i mean it's what do you do as that yeah what do let's, you do let's get into another one that i, I thought was contentious <laughs> though i don't hear people saying much yeah. about it mm. and it's about conjugal rights and when yes yes, yes. absolutely and there's yes. the issue of restitution <laughs> yes so mm -hmm. what happens if a woman feels that she's not getting you know her worth in terms of conjugal rights or a man feels he's not getting his worth yes. that he can go to court and seek restitution let's talk about what restitution <laughs> means and then let's talk about what is um yes. you know we're getting into sensitive matters now of course. Yes. But when we talk about conjugal rights what, three times a week yeah. every day of the week if i once a month yes once a actually, year actually it's, it's very interesting <laughs> because the way that the bill puts it it says that um when there is when one of the spouses mm -hmm unlawfully refuses to associate right. with the other I like that then word. the other person can yes. go to court yes. to seek conjugal rights mm -hmm. thing is this the the whole issue of conjugal rights mm -hmm. is there in our current mm -hmm. law mm -hmm. and is proposed in the bill mm -hmm. certainly a very very controversial issue actually i thought that that's what people would pick out yes. as being and, and more controversial yes, than people people don't know how to talk yes. i think people don't know how to talk about, about yeah. conjugal because of, right. because yes. of, of, of the way of we, the, yes. we are a conservative society yeah. so you know mm -hmm. we are, yeah, uh, what are you talk about polygamy <laughs> and polyandry but not <laughs> exactly, yeah. the yeah. root yeah. of the matter yeah. Yeah. well conjugal rights as we know them yeah. are of course the rights that the rights to intimacy yes. between a man and a woman within their marriage union and I think largely, and in, in fact, if you go through the bill, or even in the law as we have it mm -hmm. now, one of the aspects of marriage is the ability to consummate Absolutely. that marriage. Absolutely. So that when there's no consummation of mm -hmm. the marriage, which means the, 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 the possibility of intimacy mm -hmm. between the man and the woman, mm -hmm. then that, there's a possibility to annul mm. that, that marriage. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay? So that conjugal rights forms a very basic mm -hmm. Um, ingredient okay. I mean, yeah. well, put it that yes. way yeah, of that's what the marriage yes. is yes. so that if you then get into this voluntary union mm -hmm. with this person mm -hmm. and they become your spouse mm -hmm. and your legitimate expectation is that there will be True. Conjugal right. my conjugal rights True. will be met within this union and that's why True. I have um, yeah. you know not brother and sister myself or housemate. exactly <laughs> if then within that marriage yes the fellow refuses to associate with me and right. is not letting me know why and there's no valid reason there's no valid safe. reason not, okay exactly and 
for example, if we're in the Christian or the uh, mm -hmm. civil marriage, mm -hmm. and therefore I, there I am, stuck with him for mm -hmm. life, and not being able to um, have alternatives. Have alternatives. <laughs> I like that. I should have recourse, shouldn't I? Yes. But of course, the whole issue is how do you implement it? And when I get the court yeah. order that says that. Yeah, I mean, how can the court legislate? I mean, you know what? <laughs> you know what? <laughs> conjugal rights in prisons that has you know uh, that we see on television. It's mm -hmm. you know, a prisoner's mm -hmm. allowed a visit by a partner, maybe, yeah. you know, mm -hmm. uh, depending, and you know, you're given a room, and you're yeah. you know, I think go on and get on with it. Yeah, in a marriage, say, does yeah, the judge yeah. come and legislate Court, to say, okay, to have a, three a times a week? Room. I'd like no, a room. No, 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 no. Surely, not. <laughs> I don't think How so. How does this happen? Well, what happens is that you do get an order, mm -hmm. but I think. I think that the way that I would look at it is this way. When we look at the marriage bill, it then brings in the whole issue of mediation, mm -hmm. negotiation with the conciliatory body. Mm -hmm. A lot of times, I mean, you know, when we, if we want to take a serious look mm -hmm. at the matter, mm -hmm. is that a lot of time when family or when uh, spouses are in conflict, mm. it is perhaps because they've not been able to get the forum to be able to vent their issues mm -hmm. in a way that somebody can listen and then assist them. Okay. Okay. So yes, there is the there is the the, the, the section I think eighty four which mm -hmm. says there'll be a possibility of restitution of conjugal rights, okay. and maybe it is good to have okay. that so that people can know that um, you can't just marry this man i mean i can't just get agree to marry this man and then we go into all this formality and then, and then i just go and i yeah. you know i don't want yes. because i don't want exactly okay. and then what is he to do uh, and what am i to do indeed if all right and um you know even denial of conjugal rights is yes. a grounds for divorce yes and we'll get to that in okay yes, fine but here's a very interesting question on mm. twitter and yes. perhaps something we hadn't thought about mm. arnold says so how will the court prove denial of conjugal rights the court doesn't so have to prove anything it doesn't have to prove i anything? have to prove Something. How will you what I would say that? is that I have been married to mm -hmm. this gentleman mm -hmm. for the last three years, and for the last two and a half years, mm -hmm. he's just failed to associate with but me. But where is the proof, though? Because it's his word against mine. Things that happen in people's bedrooms, he could easily come to court and say, "What do you mean yeah, two and a half and years? We, we, we have been, you know, associating, uh, you know, as early as, uh, you know, as soon as yesterday, and you know, it's." Twice a week or every know what other that week. Was, yes, or, or you know, mm -hmm. she's lying. Mm -hmm. You know, she just wants this is malicious. Mm -hmm. Better not proof, it's, I think. It's it's yeah, it's a bit difficult. It is, it, it is a challenge, mm -hmm. and I will admit, yeah. even to you, that yeah. that one has got my mind round and round because right. even implementation, even say I was able to prove it, yes. and the court gives me the order that mm -hmm. says, all right, mm -hmm. there you go, go and serve this gentleman right. with this order. <laughs> the whole issue of <laughs> conjugal rights has got to be the mind and the body meeting yes. to be able to that's get right. into that. That's right. Uh, you know, that, that, that yeah. um, in, in intimacy. Yes. So implementation okay. is a problem. And yes, as we said, law is never perfect, that's but yeah. to look at what okay. we have and then yeah. to see oh, what Because I'm imagining, you yeah. know, when somebody has been given the order to restitute, can you imagine if somebody it, it, it will be, be immediate be terrible? Yes, yeah, I think yeah. so. Yeah. I, you know, I agree. And, yeah. and perhaps these are some of the issues that we are raising that should be discussed in Parliament, that should be brought up by the public when they go before the parliamentary yes. committee and mm. say, "Well, thank you. This is yeah. a good law." But mm. these are some of the issues that yeah. I've got, and how are you mm. going to be able to do to this? implement yes. them? And then again, to, to to say this also. Yes, you know, with every law you look at it and then you'll see something that doesn't mm -hmm. quite, mm -hmm. yeah. um, mm -hmm. you know, an impossibility, but we don't throw out an entire good law, law because, because of that. that yeah. There's right. always possibilities yeah. yes. to redraft that's yeah. right. and then to o also to look at the rationale a little yeah. more. That's also very yeah. important. Yeah. I, I I'm just having a, a, a visual <laughs> of Parliament discussing conjugal rights. I'm yeah, just this will be, that would be, yeah. it will be quite dramatic. Comedy hour. It will be, yes. And, but hopefully, I'm really hoping that the discussion will be sober. Sober. Yeah. Yeah. And, and not to see some you know some yeah but yeah, yeah well but you know these are hope, yeah. these are matters of the heart and mm -hmm. you know people think about it whichever way they will okay here we go there's another one um I'm happy that it says the minimum marriage age is 18, 18 and yes. thereby yeah. removing mm -hmm. child marriages but like we've been talking about these are cultural uh, things you know we've been saying some things mm -hmm. about culture that are not good mm -hmm. but it'll also take more than just a legislation that says you know, marrying children below the age of 18 is unlawful. Was that not there but presently? It is. It, it, no, it wasn't there okay. because I know that I think in one of the acts mm -hmm. you could marry uh, girls uh, as young as 16. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I 16. think that it is a good thing mm -hmm. for an act, a marriage, you know, an act that deals with marriages to very specifically say right. that 
a party to a marriage mm -hmm. would be mm -hmm. not less than 18 years. I think that it is actually very important okay. that that happens. Okay. And then to also go ahead and give punitive measures. A very hefty fines, happens. by the way. Yes. 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 And, and I, I think, think it's five years, years in both, jail. by the way, for yeah. cultural and, uh -huh. and um, I mean, whether marriages under custom or okay. marriages in any other form. All right. Yeah. Basic. Okay. 18. So what we are saying, customary Christian, Mohammedan, whatever Everybody, it is, everything. Yes. Yeah. the lady has got to be the, 18. The or the man. Both yeah. people must that's be 18. Right. Okay. And, and I think uh, that's, that's very important that mm -hmm. we actually put it down because, like I was saying earlier, when we do the audit mm -hmm. of, of the harmful um, traditions mm -hmm. and, the, and the positive ones, mm -hmm. this was identified as one of the most harmful right. traditions yeah. because mm -hmm. they have punitive effects on women, mm -hmm. but then they're taken for granted by communities. Mm -hmm. For instance, mm -hmm. Uh, it was it was acknowledged that a, a girl can get married after circumcision, and the age for circumcision was I think 14, 15, which mm -hmm. was mm -hmm. ideal mm -hmm. at that time. Mm -hmm. But now it's been abused, where we're having girls as young as eight being circumcised and then being married off. Why? Mm -hmm. Because of that merchandising aspect of That's it. Right. And yes. then what happens after that? We get these girls getting into unions with older men mm -hmm. who then get pregnant and then they die from childbearing mm -hmm. complications. Mm -hmm. And then we claim, mm -hmm. the communities then tend to claim that, that this, this is, is the will of God. And yes. no, 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 they claim those deaths, those high, I mean, you see, this is the thing that we don't discuss. Mm -hmm. That um, a lot of the high maternal mortality rates that Kenya records is because because of the child marriages yeah. but when you go into the communities they claim that it is the will of God that the, the that God didn't want the child to survive okay. and yet the mother, these are yeah. causes that can be mm. explained so mm. for it to be put very clear okay. so that some of these harmful traditions or some of the traditions that have been abused to the extent that they have become harmful yes. Yes. can be done away can with, be done away with. Okay. and in fact it's important to just note whilst we're here mm -hmm. that even the law, whether it's with regard to marriage or anything else, even if we take in customary laws as part of the things that we recognize, mm. if it's repugnant to morality and exactly. justice, okay. then yes. it will not be All right. acceptable. Okay, yeah. Yeah. very important yeah. to mention. Yeah. Yeah. We want to carry on with our discussion. Rose Mbanya, family lawyer, and Joki Karoya, who's with us. We're talking about the Marriage Bill 2013. We have discussed a number of issues, and now we want to get into matters of property, which I think is what is driving everybody <laughs> mad. <laughs> and having <laughs> discussions at the bus stop, at the market, at the salon, at the bar, wherever it is. Let's talk about that, first of all, because when we were on a break, you were just making a clarification about the Marriage Bill 2013 and, you know, property and how that is shared out mm. in the event of a dissolution of marriage. Okay. First off, I think I'll start by just clarifying that the issues of division of matrimonial property are contained in the matrimonial property bill, mm -hmm. okay. okay, not the marriage bill, mm -hmm. but it's good to talk about the various aspects mm -hmm. that arise from there. Mm -hmm. It gives a definition mm -hmm. of what matrimonial property is. Mm -hmm. It then also outlines how in the event of a dissolution of the marriage mm -hmm. that would be done. It gives the definition of matrimonial property as the property that is acquired during the subsistence of the marriage okay, okay. Right. it then gives the various uh, ways that that marriage uh, 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 property would be shared in the event of divorce and it says this that um, with regard to property that one first of all um, there will be property maybe that you had acquired before mm -hmm. marriage and had acquired before marriage that does not constitute okay property matrimonial. that uh, matrimonial property right if when we get married, oh, again, uh, before I go into this, it does also define what contribution is, mm -hmm. and it gives financial contribution. Mm -hmm. It also gives um, care giving, okay. and you know, just basically taking care of the home. Right. It does give um, companionship and mm -hmm. you know the, the whole possibilities, moral support, moral and, support like and all that, that okay. as possibilities of um, going under contribution. Okay. Mm -hmm. During dissolution of marriage, mm -hmm. there will be a rebuttable presumption that all property acquired during marriage is to be shared on a 50-50 basis okay. between one another. Mm -hmm. There will be a rebuttable pr um, position mm -hmm. that property acquired mm -hmm. and uh, registered jointly mm -hmm. certainly is okay. half and half, half and okay. but where property is registered in the name of just one of the spouses, mm -hmm. there will be the possibility of the other being able to claim okay. part of it mm -hmm. as being held in trust for, uh, for that spouse and the other okay. that is in the marriage. Right, yes. okay. Part of it, when where you say part of it, yes. what do you mean? There will be the, 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 the first presumption will be that 
you're holding this in trust so it is matrimonial property we've been in this together it should be half and half okay, okay. the court will then make an interrogation on um, if it is just in my name mm -hmm. because uh, as, I, as I'm saying, it's rebuttable. You, that's what you're yeah. saying, but I may be able to, to yes. say differently okay. of it. Right. Then the whole issue of contribution okay. may come in, okay. and you're able to, to decide um, what, what the proportion, what the proportion would, would be. be. But it's yes. up to 50 50. It's up to okay. 50 50. You know, what strikes mm -hmm. me as odd in all these discussions about property yes. that's going on back and forth, mm -hmm. nobody seems to talk about what goes to the children mm -hmm. because everybody says Actually, oh <laughs> me and my wife and my wife can get this and she cannot you know yes, it, it, uh, it just strikes me as odd yeah. that not many people say oh so what what amount of that goes to the children we yes. say up to 50 50 between yeah. husband, husband and, and wife. wife yes children yeah what the marriage bill yeah um emphasizes is that matters relating to children will be dealt with in the children's mm -hmm. act mm -hmm. What the Children's Act says with regard to children, of, um, um, uh, with regard to children, is that they are entitled to the care to care from both mm -hmm. their parents. Mm -hmm. The Constitution goes further to say that that care should be on an equal mm -hmm. basis, so that even when, uh, with, yeah, yeah, so that when there's a whole issue of divorce, mm -hmm. of course there'll be the whole the, the, the two adults or in the polygamous That's situation right. where we'll talk about that but <laughs> yeah. there'll be the two adults saying uh -huh. no this should be mine and this should be mine okay. and then there'll be a determination that look this is within marriage this is joint property so it's 50 50 do the valuations maybe mm -hmm. sell it and mm -hmm. uh, right, each of you get yeah. 50. right but there will also then be the con of course the concern the, the primary concern in the best interest of the children mm -hmm. will always come in in such inquiry mm -hmm. in fact the first thing that must be uh, before the court in any dissolution is mm -hmm. are there children yes and how are their rights being taken, being care, taken of? care of? What is it that you've been able to get from the children's court so that we can see that those have been settled? Mm -hmm. So even when you get your 50 and he gets his 50, mm -hmm. out of that 50 and 50, it's part of it must be it. able to be used okay. for the benefit okay. of the children. All right, okay. So talking about property, then let's get to what happens in a polygamous situation. There's yes. a question here. Mm -hmm. What happens to property? Um, mm -hmm. A man has four wives, he's divorcing the first, yes. uh, or you know, he's divorcing the fourth mm -hmm. or the third or some of those in between. Okay. The first, uh, what uh, the bill proposes is this, property that is acquired between a man and his first wife, yes, that is property that, uh, you know, the, the, the discussion will be between the two, mm -hmm. and uh, resolution of that property will be between the two. Mm -hmm. Come number two and three, mm -hmm. and maybe uh, more property is acquired. Okay. If... The, um, if there is if there is the divorce of the first wife, uh -huh. then of course there would be an inquiry, as I've said, yeah. on what is it that we had acquired mm -hmm. up to and until okay. you got the second and the, the, the third. Right. When you got the second and the third, was there a contribution from me as mm -hmm. first wife mm -hmm. in acquiring those other things that you got? Okay. Because now you know we are enlarging That's right. the family. Okay. If there is, then she will be able to get a portion of that as okay. well. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Good yes. for the first wife. Good for the first wife, I think, <laughs> and with, with good reason, I think, yeah, as yeah. well, because if she's contributing if, yeah, to the rest, to the rest then then why not? Yeah. And that goes on also, and, you so, and that's not to say that the second and third are also now not equal mm. in that marriage, because mm. if number two then has come and she's the most industrious, say, okay. and she's been able, apart from second, uh, the first and the third, yeah. to be able to okay. acquire property, Even more? then that will not be touched by. First, the first and the second. Third. Okay. Again, saying okay. all that, but remembering that the whole basis of mm -hmm. the customary marriage mm -hmm. has also got the rights of and rituals and of customs of that community. Okay. So that all that would That's also all, okay. come into that. All right. Okay. Yeah. It's funny how ten minutes can go by so quickly. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're done. <laughs> yes, it looks like we're done. Okay, I'd like your final views on this one. And indeed, the discussions we should be having in public and why it is important for members of the public to have a say and to have an input in this one. I think it's important because one, like we said, um, th there, there's there's um, there's it touches on a lot of our cultures mm -hmm. um, and it touches in a lot on into how we do things our practices um, and, and I think one of the reasons why it is important to have this marriage and the matrimonial property bill is because marriages today um, tend to break up mm -hmm. and and things come up and and so I think it's it's good to to be very clear so that people don't lose out based on promises mm -hmm. based on marriages once you've walked in mm -hmm. and it's also good to have a healthy discussion mm -hmm. about the issues that have been contained in the bill mm -hmm. so that whether whether the some elements of it are revised or at least by the time it is um, endorsed and it is an act and it is law 
people know to the extent to which they can engage mm -hmm. in a marriage mm -hmm. and should it break down to the extent to which property acquired within mm -hmm. the duration of a marriage, whether it's polygamous, monogamous, mm -hmm. polyandry. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> you can yeah. see I'm vouching for I polyandry. Uh, we need to understand how that property then mm -hmm. um, is, 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 is uh, going to be, to be uh, divided. Okay. And I think another conversation that we also need to have, which you raised, which is very uh, important, is the in, in terms of custody and maintenance of children, children mm -hmm. and and so we need to to perhaps interrogate also and just make sure that all children mm -hmm. from whichever union right. are catered for. Yeah. Um, this they uh, they Regardless. are not part of the 50-50. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. They are part of the 100%. The 100%. Mm -hmm. That's right. Mm -hmm. Okay, and you know I think also all children, not even whichever union, but even outside of any union, I think. But the That's Children's I mean. Act is very clear yeah. about mm -hmm. that. Yeah. Whether married or not, yeah. both They're parents are equally responsible mm -hmm. for that. As you close, um, you know, when you, you take a look at this bill, mm -hmm. some, some good, some not so good, depending on your angle, some uh, implementable, some maybe a little bit difficult to do that. Let's just uh, get your views on this bill in its okay. entirety. My view on the bill is that it is a good attempt and it is a progressive mm -hmm. bill towards um, achieving the spirit of the constitution when we talk about the family being the core and fundamental unit of society i think that it seeks more to protect and safeguard the rights and interests of the parties involved in the marriage institution mm -hmm. i think that it is important that when we look at it to have a sober view of it right. and not to look at it as a gender bashing mm -hmm. instrument mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. it is not a document that is made for the women mm -hmm. or made for the men mm -hmm. i think it's a document that is made for the families okay. of kenya okay. because the stronger the family is then of course the stronger the society will that's be. right I, I, th think I think it's so important yeah, to uh, not make it gender bashing yes. it's true okay. and i think for me what what this discussion and the bills are doing is that they're finally making people realize that you mm. cannot take anyone for granted mm -hmm. yes. you cannot mm -hmm. take a man for granted you cannot take a, a woman, woman for, for granted right. and therefore as you do your things you, when you make your promises whether it is outside or inside a, a, a marriage I, I think it, it 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 will make kenyans now begin to take what they say and what they do very seriously That's and right. begin to appreciate that the person that they engage with yes. is a person who has complete and total rights as enshrined in the constitution mm -hmm. and now as you know as uh, recognized within um, the bills mm -hmm. so i think this thing of taking each other for granted mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. as genders is is um is going to begin to to um, okay. be minimal mm -hmm. and to at least have us have these discussions because like we said these are some of the issues we don't talk about yes. we don't talk about conjugal rights we don't talk about separation of property we don't talk about the possible end of a marriage uh, even though many of us would like to think that yes you know marriage is for life but there are instances where, you know, and the law does allow that. Yes. Yeah. Uh, At least there know, must be an avenue that. to be able to exactly. have recourse so that right. it can be sorted out in, a, in an amicable way yeah. or in a, in a civil way. Is as, as amicable as possible. Exactly. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So all of this. Yeah. Um, will there be any presentation, do you think, from women's uh, you know, rights lobbyists to the parliamentary committee regarding this? Will we be able to, uh, you know, present a petition August 5th, 20 days after that? I'm sure they are. I'm mm. sure the women, I mean, I know they're putting together a document mm -hmm. um, that, that seeks to explain um, aspects of the bill, especially the ones that the public contends to mm -hmm. be contentious, mm -hmm. uh, to just explain it as, as, um, as soberly as she has done it. Mm -hmm. Because you see now when you hear it from an expert, then mm -hmm. you begin to appreciate that, oh, okay. it's not out to victimize any gender. Yes. What it's trying to do is just create an equal, yeah. um, okay. where, where everybody comes out uh, happy yeah. and sorted. And satisfied with the and contract satisfied. that is marriage. Exactly. Okay. And even with the contribution, at least to make sure that uh, for the duration of, of of, of, of your time in that marriage, your contribution is, is, is mm. taken cognizance of mm -hmm. and it is uh, compensated. Okay. Um, okay. So, and, and I know they're trying to do it in, in a way that does not come across as, like she said, gender bashing, mm. because 
this bill ultimately is just trying to to make sure that it's for the for the good of all. Definitely. Okay, all yeah. right, for the good of all in that. And I think, like Rose um, Banya said this morning, that just because you're unhappy with one aspect of it doesn't mean we throw out the entire bill. We can always make changes to what we do not like. All right. Thank you so much. That's been our discussion for the day today. Um, and, and thank you for your feedback as well. Now you know better. Please do refrain from having this thing about gender eh? and, and all those uh, really bad, sick, uh, in bad taste jokes about men and women. I, I really do not appreciate it. Let's <laughs> talk about the bill. What you don't like, you don't like. And that's allowed. Do make sure you make that presentation. I want to leave you with this quote of the day. Uh, and it's all about relationships. Here it goes. Every good relationship, especially marriage, is based on respect. If it's not based on respect, nothing that appears to be good will last very long. I'll take that again so that you can just, you know, put that there. Even as you have these discussions, make sure they're respectful. Huh? Every good relationship, especially marriage, is based on respect. If it is not based on respect, then nothing that appears to be good will last very long. And that's by Amy Grant. So think about that. Have respectful discussions about the marriage bill and have respect in all your relationships, be it marriage or otherwise. I think if we have the basis of that, then a lot that's happening in the marriage bill, you know, when you're discussing conjugal rights or the end of a marriage, as long as it's done respectfully, then you are on the right path. That's it for today. Thank you very much for joining us. I do hope you've been a little bit more enlightened on the show today. Have a very great day ahead. Kwaheri, my name is Ivana Kwar. with Minute Maid.